the Married Woman's Property Act, Section 19, saving of existing settlements and the power to make future settlements. Nothing in this act contained shall interfere with or affect any settlement or agreement for a settlement made or to be made whether before or after marriage respecting the property of any married woman or shall interfere with or render inoperative any restriction against anticipation at present attached to the employment of any property or income by a woman under any settlement, agreement for a settlement, will or other instrument, but no restriction against anticipation contained in any settlement or agreement for a settlement of a woman's own property to be made or entered into by herself shall have any validity against debt contracted by her before marriage and no settlement or agreement for a settlement shall have any greater force or validity against creditors of such woman than a like settlement or agreement for a settlement made or entered into by a man would have against his creditors. All right, let's see this one again. Nothing in this act contained shall interfere with or affect any settlement or agreement for a settlement made or to be made whether before or after marriage respecting the, mar the property of any married woman. All right, the last part says, <clears throat> and no settlement or agreement for a settlement shall have any greater force or validity against creditors of such woman than a like settlement or agreement for a settlement made or entered into by a man. All right, maybe what this is saying it seems is that whoever the woman owes money she still owes them and it should not be taken that her husband must pay her debt All right that seems to what to be what it is saying and if she owes money before marriage when she is married married the creditors should not it increase their effort to obtain money from her probably assuming that she can now get money from her husband to pay so that should not be done all right Section 20 costs may be ordered to be paid out of property subject to the restraint on anticipation. In any action or proceeding from or after the 21st day of June 1895 instituted by a woman or by a next friend on her behalf, the court before which such action or proceeding is pending shall have jurisdiction by judgment or order from time to time to order payment of the costs of the opposite party out of property which is subject to a restraint on anticipation and may enforce such payment by the appointment of a receiver and the sale of the property or otherwise as may be just. So this is saying in any action or proceeding from and after the 20th day of, 19, of 1895 instituted by a woman or by a next friend on her behalf. So the woman takes action or the friend takes action on her behalf. The court before which such action or proceeding is pending shall have jurisdiction 
by a judgment to order the payment of the costs and may enforce such payment by appointment of a receiver and the sale of property of the property okay so they may sell the property that she has in order to recover money from her the money that she owes all right will of married woman section 21 section 19 of the wills act which provides that a will shall take effect as if it were executed immediately before the, the, the death of the testator shall apply to the will of a married woman whether she is or is not possessed of or entitled to any property at the time of making it and such will shall not require to be re-executed or published after the, the death of her husband so this seems to be saying that a married woman may make a will leaving possessions to her children or her husband even if she doesn't have property she is or not possessed of or entitled to any property at the time of making it oh she can it seems as if this is saying that the married woman can make a will and have her husband's property in the will to pass on and shall and such shall not be required to be re-executed or republished after the death of her husband shall apply to the will of a married woman or right. so this probably is saying that she can make that will and have the joint property of her and her husband in the will and if her husband dies before her there is no need to rewrite that will or republish it all right section 22 married woman to be liable to the parish for the maintenance of her husband where the husband of any woman having property becomes chargeable to the parish the resident magistrate having jurisdiction in such parish may upon application of the inspector of the poor issue a summons against the wife and make and enforce such order against her for the maintenance of her husband out of such property as by the maintenance act the resident magistrate may make and enforce against the husband for the maintenance of his wife if she becomes chargeable to any parish i think becoming chargeable to any parish means you're no longer working you have to be supported by the state so instead of paying taxes to the government you are consuming taxes from the government so you are chargeable so in this case someone other than the state is being forced to look after you if you get into such a situation and it would be your husband or your wife all right married woman to be liable to the parish for maintenance of her children a married woman having property shall be subject to all such liability for the maintenance of her children and grandchildren as the husband is now by law subject to for the maintenance of her children and grandchildren 
So she can be forced to maintain her children and grandchildren. And grandchildren. So why would they force her to look after her grandchildren? Those grandchildren would have their parents, but I guess maybe if the parents are dead or some other such situation, maybe they are disabled. A married woman having property shall be subject liable to maintain her children and grandchildren as the husband is now by law subject to for the maintenance of his children and grandchildren once they have property they have enough money to do so provided always that nothing in this act shall relieve her husband from any liability imposed upon him by law to maintain her children or grandchildren I guess if she had children that are not his he is still liable to maintain those children hmm. all right section 24 family court in section 22 any reference to a resident magistrate court insofar as it may relate a to a resident magistrate for the parish of Kingston or for the parish of St. Andrew shall as respects any time on or after the 13th day of November 1978 be constructed as a reference to a judge of the family court corporate area region and b to a resident magistrate court for a parish within the ge geographical jurisdiction of a family court established pursuant to part two of the judi judi judicator as family court act shall with effect from the date on which any such court is established be construed as a reference to a judge of that family court so that was the married woman's property act